Welcome to the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. I'm your host, Simone Morris, and I have a passion for empowering others to take responsibility for their careers. Yes, I've written several books on owning your career and am loving hosting this podcast. This podcast is for you if you're willing to make a shift to the driver's seat in your career. We feature leaders who inspire, empower, and motivate you for consistent career action for results. Please continue to join us every Sunday when a new episode is released. Let's get into this week's show. Welcome to this week's episode of the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. Our next guest says that she's made a major pivot in her career after 25 years, and I'm delighted to welcome to the show, Kirsten Graham. Kirsten, welcome to the show. Simone, thank you so much for having me. I love the conversations that you have on this podcast with your guests. They're all very enlightening. Oh, I love to hear that. Thank you for the feedback. Well, tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and what you're currently doing. Sure. I started my career in the late 80s in real estate and I sold real estate. I eventually moved to the mortgage side. Eventually I owned a mortgage company and a title company in 2008 hit (laughs) and we survived. I always say we survived, but we were not thriving. And in 2013, my mom was terminally ill. So I decided to leave that business completely. And it's funny how things happen for you. I had done a ton of loans for self-employed clients. So I would see their full tax returns, business tax returns and personal tax returns. And I was very involved in the community and very involved in networking. And inevitably they would reach out and say, hey, can I take you to lunch to pick your brain? Mm. And so I had been mentoring for about a decade and I never really thought about a coaching business. So it kind of fell into my lap and it was ideal because I was able to do that from home with my mom when she was uh, towards the end of her life. And then it also gave me the freedom to live in a different location. So I now live in Florida instead of in Virginia. And the coaching business really took off. And I have some clients that I've had for a very long time. And I'm very blessed in that regard. But I ended up partnering with one of my coaching clients. And Mm -hmm. we really help our clients with marketing and outsourcing. So that's another whole story. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Uh, We have stuff in common. I love being an entrepreneur because it allows me to be a mom. And then I recently lost my mom. Um, and so the flexibility to be there for care was really important being an entrepreneur. So I love that you decided to make this pivot. So tell me, let's jump right to the meat of the show then. So from your experience in real estate and in entrepreneurship, can you think Tell me about the ingredients that um, come up for you when you think about owning your career. What's necessary? What's the formula? The first thing I think is you need to have a mindset around learning because everything's everything's changing, especially now with AI. I like to joke that there's never been a point in my life where I wished I was younger until AI came out. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I wish I were 20 right now because I'm so excited to see where this is going to go. But learning, I feel like most entrepreneurs and I think people also who are developing their career understand the importance of learning, um, getting coaching, actively getting coached so that you can get better. And then obviously having like a very positive mindset a flexible mindset, understanding that you're capable of learning and growing in any way you need to, to achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. Well, you talk about learning and AI and I, I, I must admit the self-driving car uh, is a little scary to me, but, and, and I think that there are some people who are resistant to learning in their careers. Can you talk about how you've used learning to grow your career? Absolutely. Well, I think as entrepreneurs, it's very important for us. We always go to at least one or two conferences a year Mm -hmm. because we need to stay up on what's happening in marketing. And my business partner and I, when we started outsourcing, it's been gosh, almost 16 years now. It was before Zoom. It was before a lot of the tools that make it so much easier now to do that. You know, we really learned some hard lessons because there just wasn't anyone to really learn those things from. So like the hard knocks of life, the school of hard knocks of life. Mm -hmm. So we learned a lot of things that we 
try to help our clients and, and try to educate people on so that they don't have to make the same mistakes. So when I think about learning, going to conferences, and then also not giving up, if something doesn't work out for you, don't give up on it. Evaluate why it didn't work out and then adjust. And I feel like that's really important for moving forward with your career or your business is always being open-minded to pivot if you need to, but also understanding that you don't fail. You never fail. You just figured out something that wouldn't work. And so now you need to take that information and figure out how you can make it work. Mm. I love what you're saying about reframing failure and embracing the pivot. So if you had to come up with a name for your career body of work or a title, what would it be? Beautiful chaos. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, beautiful chaos. What would the subtitle yeah. be? I love it. Beautiful chaos. Let's think about the subtitle. Probably something about a journey to happiness mm -hmm. each day. Mm. Yeah. Mm, beautiful chaos. How how do we interpret beautiful chaos in terms of owning our careers? I think we have in our culture, we have this mistake that there's perfection. There's no such thing as perfection. I used to tell my clients when they were buying a house, there's no such thing as a perfect person. There's no such thing as a perfect house, right? Mm -hmm. So letting go of perfectionism, I think even for women, that's even harder because I think there's so much societal pressure on us to be able to do everything and to do it really well. Mm -hmm. So my first point would be let go of perfectionism. And then, like I said earlier, embrace your mistakes. You know, I think that we, we get up every day and I think, okay, well, what mistakes can I make today? You know, mm -hmm. how can I fail today? What can go wrong today? Because I know it's not going to, it might knock us down for a minute, but it's not going to keep us down. And what's really interesting is also when you start to build a team, empowering your team to be able to make decisions and own their mistakes. Because a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we want to control everything. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we are never able to delegate. We're never able to build a team that can really support us in achieving our bigger goals. And we always tell our team, if a mistake is made, that's fine. You learned something that didn't work. Let's reassess and try again. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just really important for all of us to understand that perfection doesn't exist. Mm. I was just going to ask you, how do you, how, you know, to walk through with our listeners, how to own your mistake in your career when you make a mistake? So I think there's small mistakes, <laughs> you know, there's just those little things that we did that didn't work out right away. And, and we just have to, to pivot and fix it. But I think it could also be bigger mistakes, you know, in our careers. And I think those are a little bit harder because that's where I think we assign failure. So I think the biggest thing you can do is not assign failure to anything that happens in your career or really in your life, because if you do, then you're carrying that past with you and it's destroying the present moment you have right now. Mm -hmm. And it's coloring the future with a very negative color. So rather than accepting what happened, you know, again, owning whatever it was, learning from it and then letting it go, I think is really important. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can have career wounds that we have a hard time. I do a lot of career coaching and I, I work with my clients around um, recognizing when there are wounds that are impeding their growth. So you can have a wound that stalls you. And, and I love what you're saying here, Kirsten, about being able to let it go, let the mistake go so that you can, in fact, uh, move forward. Talk to us about risk. You talked about moving from... Uh, Virginia to Florida. And there are opportunities in one's career where there's an opportunity to relocate for your career. What what was in your mind in thinking about the move? I don't know if the move was for your mom, actually. Come to think of it, it might be. Uh, but when you think about risk in your career, talk to us about some of the risks that you have taken and how they have served you. So my mom was in Virginia and obviously when you own a real estate business, it's very location uh, driven. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard for me to, to move somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So after my mom passed away, I realized I can really live anywhere. So right now I live in beautiful Sarasota, Florida, who knows where I'll live next. I think that's one of the, the things about being able to live anywhere and work from anywhere, mm -hmm. but it also has risk in the sense that you have to make new friendships. You have to build new relationships 
Um, you have to join different networking groups and get to know other business owners locally. And that can be scary, especially as we get older. I think our world can become smaller. And, and I think that's a big mistake for a lot of people. I think the most important thing we can do is realize that the people in our lives, whether they're business connections or friends and family, they're the most important thing when it comes to our success and our happiness. You know, that's the, that's the person you're going to sound off with, with something didn't go wrong. You know, someone's mm -hmm. going to talk out your challenges with someone to celebrate the big and little things in your life. So I think moving to Florida was of the risk of just starting new in a new location. I mean, the business was the same. The coaching business has been the same, but it's been really interesting. And over the years, our coaching business has really um, evolved. One of the things that I realized with most clients is marketing and lead generation was their biggest challenge. So that's why I partnered with my business partner and we really help clients. We coach them around their marketing strategy, but my passion is outsourcing. I believe that, you know, no one should have to build a business alone. So I love helping people build a team. And so we've kind of partnered those two things, her passion for marketing and mine for outsourcing. And we really coach our clients around their marketing strategies. And then we train their virtual assistants to do all the tasks for them. Mm. So I feel like there's always an evolution in business. And I think that's what makes it exciting. Mm, mm. Yeah. Can you, if you go back to your time in real estate, those 25 years, what sort of evolution were you doing to stay current in that space? Well, interesting, because when I started, we really didn't have CE. We didn't have, we didn't even have continuing education back when I first started, but obviously that became a big part of our lives. I was around to see the licensing happening for mortgage lenders and mortgage brokers and loan officers. So that was interesting, but I really feel like most, th those two jobs were the same. They were sales, right? Whether it's real estate sales or mortgage sales, or, you know, selling someone to use your title company, it's all about sales. And I feel like they say that that's one of the hardest careers you can have, but it's also one of the most profitable careers to be in. Mm. So always learning different sales techniques, always learning how to show up hundred percent for our clients, being present and just learning because sales isn't about, people think it's about manipulation. It's about really listening and only making an offer to someone if it's truly going to benefit them, if it's the right offer for them. And so I think that's just the integrity that needs to come within a sales business. Yeah, I would say, would you agree that in our careers, no matter what career it is, that sales is a part of it? Yeah, it's so funny. This is a great, <laughs> I love this topic. <laughs> Thank you so much, Simone. Yeah, I, I like to think of sales as, sales is part of our everyday life, right? As a parent, you're selling your child on why they should eat their vegetables. You know, we're selling ourselves in the morning to get up and we really just want to hit snooze, but no, if we get up, we get our day going, we'll feel better. So every day there's a part of selling. So if you're in a corporate job, you know, you're selling your boss on why they should move you up. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you have the skill set, or why should they send you to a conference or why should they pay for you to have additional education? So it's important to be able to advocate for yourself and not look at sales as a dirty word. I think so often people think about sales in a really negative way. But for most of us, if you think about it, if you go into a store and you're looking for something and you're really rushed on time and you say, yes, I'm looking for this. And that salesperson takes you directly to it. You're very grateful for that. Or, you know, so a lot of times we, we deal with salespeople every day. And in most cases, we're grateful for them. Now there are pushy people and things like that, but I think 95% of the time we deal with fantastic people when we need to buy something. So it's thinking about how can you be that fantastic person when you want something to buy from you, when you want someone to buy from you, whether it's an idea or a product or a service. Mm, I love the framing that you've done. And that's something that I have discovered over the years, like having, uh, building your capability, your ability to negotiate and sell will serve you in whatever career you are in. So very important point that you've mentioned. I want to go back to something you said earlier, Kirsten, and it's about getting older and, and the wisdom that comes with that. What are some of the challenges that you have seen from getting older in the workplace and how have you dealt with that? Wow. So we have a lot of clients in their 60s and 70s, which is fantastic because a lot of them aren't super tech savvy. So they really value and appreciate their virtual assistant who can take care of a lot of the tech mm -hmm. things for them. I think what's amazing is we get older, we have more financial security. So we do have money to invest in building a team in marketing. I think the other thing is we're not as reactive. You know, when you're mm -hmm. younger, you tend to be a bit more reactive. 
Mm-hmm. I think we're also more confident with who we are and the decisions that we make, because we know that if we make the wrong decision, it's not going to kill us. It may feel like it's going to for a couple of minutes, but it doesn't inevitably. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of things that go with getting older and being confident in your career or in your business. I don't think it's a negative. I know our society really leans towards younger people, but when I look at marketing, you know, my business partner and I, we always say we didn't grow up in a time where we were living out loud. You know, we didn't Mm -hmm. grow up on social media. So in that regard, we have to figure out what works for us and make it really be authentic to us and who we are. So it's understanding that there's a way to do things that is in line with who you are and where you are in your life. Mm -hmm. I love that. We are living in a different time. You're so right because uh, identities are being embraced differently in today's workplace and career. And you can use that as a competitive advantage, depending on the career that you choose to go after. Is there any additional wisdom that you would share with our audience around being in the driver's seat in your career? Well, I'm going to couple this with the age question. For me, it is so incredibly beautiful when we get to work with clients who they've worked a job their entire life, they've raised their kids, they've taken care of their spouses, and now they're at a place in their life when they can finally have this dream come true of building their business. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just such a beautiful thing because what you see is where, what we talked about earlier, where lives can get smaller, our lives can get smaller as we get older, their lives expand and they expand because they are out networking, they are going to conferences. They are interacting with other people who are truly excited about their businesses. And I think that's very powerful to be older and to be excited about life every day is, is a gift. You know, one of our neighbors, she worked in the tech industry. She started back when I think there were punch cards. She turns 85 this month. (laughs) So back, right. So she was only able to move up a couple of levels. And then she had to train the men that were then promoted above her. So she ended up freelancing and traveling to Italy and working there and several other different places, but she worked in her career until she was 83 years old. Wow. You know, so it's amazing when you think about the fact that she still got to be involved with doing what she loves and she had knowledge and skills that a lot of other people didn't have about these older mainframes and these different types of computers and coding that have, you know, were phasing out, so to speak. And then again, talking about the clients who are starting businesses later in life. Um, There's a lady that goes to one of my networking groups and she's 80 and she just got back from, yeah, safari in Africa. She has great stories and great pictures and, you know, she's so spry and so full of life. If you met her, you would never think she's over 65, but here she is living her life to the fullest at 80. And I think that's where we all want to go. That's who we want to be is these people who are living really full lives. And again, having a business when you're older in life allows you to interact with younger people who are in business and have a different sphere of influence than what you would have if you were just basically retired. Oh, I love that. I'm, I'm, I've got the travel bug. I'm thinking about Italy. I'm thinking about Africa. I have been to Italy, amazing food. And uh, you're just getting me excited about traveling again. And, and I love the idea of being flexible as an entrepreneur, because you're able to work from anywhere, uh, presumably, mm-hmm to serve your clients. So uh, very good. When you think about your career, um, have you been a passenger? So been hands off, hands off the wheel in terms of owning your career? Yes. I think when 2008 hit, when when I was in the mortgage business, I think a lot of us let go of the wheel because we didn't know what was going on. So I think definitely then that felt very out of control. It was very scary times for a lot of us. So I didn't really, you know, again, I didn't really like that feeling. Most of the time, if we're entrepreneurs, we have a little bit of control issues in some ways. But yeah, I think there are going to be times in your career where things, for whatever reason, maybe it's an illness in the family or something going on where you take your hands off the wheel for a little while to focus on family or what's important at that time. And then there may be times when you take your hands off the wheel because something's happening in the marketplace that you're in that you just don't know what's going on. So I think there's different times that that can happen for sure. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what's your guidance for um, resetting or stabilizing when that happens? Getting back to your why, Mm -hmm. you know, why are you in that career? Why have you, why do you want to build that business? 
get really clear on why you're doing what you're doing. And, you know, for us, you know, I've talked a lot about our clients who are amazing people, but there's also a flip side of that coin. There's these lovely women halfway around the world who our clients are providing great jobs for, mm-hmm. you know, they're providing long-term jobs and they're treating them really well. And then they're providing vacation and bonuses. So I also love thinking about why do I do it? So yes, we get up and do it because we help our clients, which I love, but I also love helping these young women halfway around the world. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's really exciting for me for some reason. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Can you share with our audience any resources that have been helpful to you in owning your career? So I'll give a little plug for this book right here. It's called Eight to Great. Mm -hmm. And it's a fantastic book by MK Mueller. It's not just about owning your career. It's about taking full responsibility for your life. And it has so many great tips for being happy. So I really recommend this book. I always recommend Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, I love it. I think it's Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic book. But I would also say, you know, if you're in a career, definitely let me, let me backtrack a little bit. We actually have a client who is a career coach as well. He works with people in the tech space. And one of the things I never thought about was the fact that if you are a software engineer or a tech engineer, your manager is really the person who is coaching you and helping you. Well, if that manager doesn't want to promote you because they don't want you to leave the team, or if they feel maybe you're a threat, if you did get promoted, then you would be competing with them for the next promotion. So I think it's really important for people who are in careers to seek outside coaching, mm-hmm. very much like, like what you do, because the people in your business, you know, your direct supervisors, they could be wonderful people, but they may not have your best interest at heart. They may not be thinking about where your career should go. Mm-hmm. So I really believe that seeking out outside coaching, reading books, I think listening to podcasts, just put yourself in a new environment where every day you're learning and every day you're developing who you are as a person. I love that. The song in my head that says, every day I'm hustling, I'm going to change it to every day I'm learning. (laughs) Yes, very good. So please tell our audience how they can stay connected with you, Kirsten, if they'd like to do so. Sure. They can reach me at Six Figure Business Coaching. That's S-I-X, Figure Business Coaching. We have an entire resource page and I have one-on-one business coaching. And like I said, my business partner and I have a couple of different programs where we help businesses learn how to market their business and have a virtual assistant do all of the work on the back end. So yeah, Mm -hmm. sixfigurebusinesscoaching.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being a guest on the Power of Owning Your Career podcast. Thank you. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this week's empowering career story on the podcast. If you did, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Wherever you listen to the podcast, be sure that you are subscribing and that you rate and review the podcast. It's so important as we continue to spread the word of career empowerment. In addition, you can head over to the LinkedIn platform and join the Power of Owning Your Career discussion group. There you can have access to the guests who have been on the podcast, as well as others listening to the podcast, as well as myself, where we can continue the conversation. I hope to see you on that platform. You can also email me at pooyc at simonemorris.com if you have a suggestion for guest or a message that you want me to hear personally. Thanks so much and make it an inspiring, empowering week in your career.